Back when I started watching football in the early 2000s, most teams used prolific wingers, speedy dribblers who mostly stuck to the sidelines in order to stretch the opposition's defence. But in the modern game, this is no longer that common, given that the width is mostly provided by attacking fullbacks, and the winger's main job now is to cut inside, either take a shot from outside the box or add numbers in the middle. This position is now referred to as the inverted winger, and is by far the most common use of wingers in the modern game. But why are they so popular in the modern game? In today's video, we're going to be answering that question, and we're going to be taking a look at the main advantages of the inverted winger. Now, before we take a look at the main advantages, let's first describe the inverted winger. The inverted winger is a tactical development of the traditional winger. While the traditional winger will often stay wide, hug the touchline and look to deliver crosses into the box, the inverted winger will look to move more centrally as often as possible, making diagonal runs into the box, effectively becoming supporting strikers. While traditional wingers dominated in the early 2000s when the 4-4-2 was still in vogue, the increasing popularity of formations such as the 4-3-3 and 4-2-3-1 saw the rise of inverted wingers, who have become one of the most important tactical positions on the pitch. An important aspect of the inverted winger that is essential to how they work is their preferred foot. While with traditional wingers a right-footed player would play on the right and a left-footed player would play on the left, the inverted winger will look to invert these players, meaning a right-footed player will play on the left and a left-footed player will play on the right wing. We'll get into the main advantages of this later on in the video. The inverted winger is by no means an innovative tactic and can be dated back as early as 1922 with Herbert Chapman when he won the FA Cup with Huddersfield Town. Nearly a century later and it's clear what a visionary Chapman turned out to be, with some of the greatest players in the modern game all being inverted wingers, from Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Ian Robin, Eden Hazard or Mo Salah to name a few. And please feel free to leave any insulting comments down below with players I forgot to mention. The inverted winger is not inherently better than a traditional winger, and it's always important to consider the main tactics used by the coach and the individual playstyle of that winger. But before we take a look at that, I just want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, OneFootball. OneFootball is hands down the best app for any updates from the football world. From transfers to statistics, goal scorers, assists, or any news in the football world, OneFootball will cover it. It's the best app to have while you're watching a game as it gives you live statistical updates and commentary to help you better understand how the game is being played. OneFootball makes following your favorite team incredibly simple, and the best part about it is that it's completely free. So if you think it's something you might enjoy, click the link in the description down below to get started. Thank you to OneFootball, and let's take a look at the main advantages of the inverted winger. The first main advantage of the inverted winger is the space they occupy. While often looking to collect the ball out wide before dribbling inside, at times they will look to collect in the half space between the centre back and the full back, a tricky position to defend, as it leaves the defenders in two minds. Firstly, if the defending full back presses, then it could leave space for the full back. However, if the centre back presses, then it could leave space for the striker to attack and take a shot at goal. It's a position that can very quickly unlock defences and create opportunities. A second important advantage of the inverted winger is the type of delivery that he can provide into the box. When looking at crosses, there are mainly two types of delivery, inswingers and outswingers. Outswingers are great for teams who have a striker who is excellent in the air, as he is able to get more power on the header given the natural rotation of the ball. However, outswinging crosses can be easier to defend. The goalkeeper can more easily intercept, given the ball will come closer to the goal before moving away and the defence, if set up properly, can clear the ball more easily, as they will have a more natural stance and can move up along with the flight of the ball. Inswingers, on the other hand, can cause more issues to the defence. Firstly, the inswinging cross means the striker will look to meet the ball at its closest point to the goal, making it harder for the goalkeeper to have time to react or intercept, as the opportune moment for the goalkeeper to intercept is when the ball is closest to the goal. Secondly, inswingers are a lot harder for defenders to clear as they will need to run backwards while the ball loops over them, making it hard for them to get a good defensive header. If a striker is attacking at the back post, a good in-swinging cross will mean he has the whole goal to aim for. However, if opting for an inverted winger, the team does still have the option of an out-swinging cross, which brings us nicely to the third main advantage of the inverted winger, the relationship with the fullback. The rising use of inverted wingers has naturally led to the increasing rise of attacking fullbacks who now more than ever are essential for creating width and delivering balls into the box. With the winger cutting inside, this frees up space for the fullback to move into and potentially deliver an outswinging cross for the striker to get on the end of. 
An excellent example of this is the partnership between Mo Salah and Trent Alexander-Arnold. With Salah cutting inside, Trent will push up on the flank, and this will naturally force the opposing fullback to stay wide and cover, meaning Salah has more time to either dribble closer to the box or deliver a cross, while Trent will be ready to deliver a cross from deep if Salah decides to move the ball out wide. It means a defence can't fully commit to one type of delivery, as there will always be the immediate threat of both types of crosses. As mentioned earlier, a second way the fullback and inverted winger can cause issues is because of their preferred foot. For example, when moving down the left flank, if there are two left footed players, then naturally, both will look to hug the touchline and beat the fullback in a 1v1. In contrast, having both a left and right footed player on the flank offers a lot more opportunities, as they can attack down both sides of the fullback. If the winger has the ball and he cuts inside, this frees up space for the fullback to move into, and the winger can have time to make a decision. A natural consequence of this is also having many more attacking players available in the box. In a 4-2-3-1 with the fullback overlapping, it means the team can have at least four players readily available in or around the box for any attacking move. Now, the relationship between the fullback and the inverted winger is fundamental. However, the inverted winger can cause damage even without using the fullback. The fourth advantage of the inverted winger is the vast amount of options that they have when cutting inside. Let's assume the winger is part of a 4-2-3-1 and is up against the standard back four defence. Once the winger is cut inside, he is now facing his striker, the attacking midfielder and the other winger, with the fullback on the other flank. From this position, the striker could look to attack the front post, so a quick diagonal could be an option. Or, alternatively, the right wing attacks the back post, so an in-swinger on the second post is a second option. Thirdly, if the back line has closed the space for this to happen, then he has the attacking mid near him to either recirculate possession or move the ball out of this tight space. And finally, if all these options are not available, that most likely means the opposition has committed a lot of players to this flank and will mean the fullback on the opposing wing will have space. And a switch of play to the other flank is another dangerous option and a difficult one for the defence to stop. Finally, as we've seen, these types of wingers are usually excellent dribblers and finishers. And if no passes are available, then the winger can cut inside, take a curling shot onto the second post, or attack the back line, looking to draw a penalty or a free kick, which can all be very beneficial for the team. So, as we can see, the inverted winger does have some clear advantages compared to the traditional winger. However, as with all roles and tactics, they highly depend on the team and the manager. And now, let me know what you think. What are your thoughts on the inverted winger and who's your favourite player in this position? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below, along with any suggestions for future videos. And if you enjoyed this content, please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.